All right, YouTube. We're gonna be doing a mid fade, curls on top, curling sponge. Got anything you say to the camera? Nah, it's fire, bro. That's it. <laughs> we good, man. That's what we're gonna be doing today. So let's get it. Cue the intro. Oh my God, is that people blow? What is happening YouTube? It's Pico Blurred back again with another video. Um, you guys heard it in the beginning. I'm gonna be doing a high bald fade, curling sponge on top, just bringing out that curly style. Um, I'm not gonna be really doing a tutorial on this video. If you guys wanna watch another in-depth tutorial, I have a few up on the channel, go check those out. Um, this one, I'm just gonna pretty much talk about the hairstyle the haircut how it is going for me on this haircut um because most of you guys know i posted him a while ago uh, not a tutorial or anything but um i had him in a video because i'm not super familiar with coarse uh curly hairstyles so this is probably my fourth time ever doing uh coarse curly hair and so i'm still learning i'm not an expert by any means with this style of uh haircut with this um texture of, of hair so I'm, 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 I'm learning as I go and I'm, I'm growing with it. If you saw what it looked like the first time I cut them versus this time, you can see the difference. You can see uh, how much I progressed in this style of hair cutting. But um, yeah, it's not going to be a tutorial like that. I'm just going to talk about how I feel about the cut, how, how I feel about coarse hair versus like straight hair and stuff like that. Um, I'll drop some key points in there of something that... Uh, you know i i use to achieve the style but um i'm not gonna go super in depth about all my steps because if you guys have seen my other tutorials you guys know that i use the same steps every time i usually clear out the bulk then i put it in my bald line i use uh, the open clipper to set in my second guideline and then i use uh i clear that out i fade that out and then i use my one to set in my next guideline and then i clear that with the half guard and, and so on so um if you guys want to check out another tutorial i have a bunch up go check those out if you want to in-depth on my system um but anyways let me talk about this cut really quick and i apologize for the way my voice sounds right now i'm pretty sick <laughs> making this edit and recording this voiceover um so bear with me on this um i'm just not feeling great but you know I'm, I'm trying to bust out the content for you guys um and keep the channel you know pushing out content so you guys can have something to watch something to learn from uh stuff like that but um yeah about this cut uh this is only my fourth time cutting him and pretty much like my fourth or fifth time ever cutting uh coarse hair like this and his his hair is super super tight and, and curly super tight coils um and is really dense you know, it's not like other, uh, like I have a client that has curly hair, but he's, he's, uh, Hispanic. So it's not super tight coily. It's nice and flowy curls. So, you know, that's pretty easy to work on. It's almost is, is like straight hair to me. Um, but this is like super, super dense. It's super hard to pick out. It's super hard to, to comb through. So, um, if there's any tips that you guys can give me as far as like picking out, I've noticed that it's, uh, it gets snagged up a little bit. And I know you're not supposed to pull the, the pick all the way through the coils or, or it will break the hair. I know that. Um, but if there's any like tips as far as making it easier for me to pick out the hair, um, I'd greatly appreciate that comment. Uh, I know like I think sometimes you can spray water on the hair and it help, it'll help out uh, that process. But I don't know. I, I've only you know, I'm not super familiar with it. But anyways, he usually just gets a fade around the side. Um, he doesn't really touch the top. So I, you saw me using the pick. I'm just trying to flare out the sides just so I know um, what I'm going to freehand later and cut off and get that right shape that I'm looking for. So I pick out the hair um, all the way around like his parietal ridge area just so I know exactly like the shape that I'm I'm envisioning for it. Um, it's not the shape that I want right now just because I'm doing my like initial steps for the fade but i make sure you want to make sure that you're picking out and combing out the hair um so it gets to its true length um and then that's when you you're ready to cut it because once it's at its true length you know that um when you cut it it's gonna stay in that shape that you cut it in um with super tight coily hair like this uh it'll shrink back to uh to place 
um, especially if you don't comb it out and you don't pick it out um, you're not gonna really cut it uh, super accurate so you want to make sure that you're uh, picking the hair out to its full length its full natural length um, and then you cut the hair and if you're new to, to curly hair like I am um, a tip to give you is to always comb down your hair after you're cutting it uh, because the the curls will want to stay where you um, where you clipper it up to so as you're you know pulling your strokes with your with your clipper um and putting in like your guidelines for example the hair is going to want to stay in that place so you're wanna, gonna want to brush it down um or comb it down back uh back down so it lays in place so you can cut the hair um more accurately you want to make sure that the hair is laying down or else it will stay in that spot and then it's not you're not going to be cutting it uh accurately at all with straight hair it's a bit different you know straight hair is not going to stay um where the clipper goes it pretty much falls back in place um so for me for example i cut a lot of straight hair it's a bit easier for me it's just something that i'm used to um and you don't have to you don't have to be brushing it down like that it just lays in place naturally but with curly hair um it's gonna stay in that spot where you bring that clipper up so you want to make sure that you're brushing or uh combing down that hair after every pass and earlier you saw me using a shaver on him um you have to make sure that you ask every client uh if they can handle the shaver especially your um your black clients um not all of them like they, they have sensitive skin so not all of them can handle the shaver usually with like caucasian and like hispanic people shavers no problem um but with curly hair since the hair uh grows differently out of the skin um, you want to make sure that they can handle the shaver so you have to ask um, sometimes if you don't know and you go in with the shaver it'll actually leave like razor bumps um, and it'll last on their skin uh, for a good while so you want to make sure if, if they've never gotten a shaver before you can test it on them um, just to know for like next time but usually they know so ask them if they can handle the shaver and then if they can then you're good to go but again, like like I said before, I'm not an expert at uh, coarse curly hair. I'm still learning. Um, I don't have enough practice, uh, you know, doing this style of texture. So every practice that I can get, I'm just looking to improve. Um, and it takes me a, a good minute. It takes me almost uh, an hour, 15 minutes uh, to do this haircut. You know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, I finished this cut super fast just because I'm not used to it. I don't really know. I don't have enough experience cutting um coarse curly hair so it does take me a little bit um which you know is fine especially with him he's one of my good friends from from college and so he bears with me um i'm not his normal barber he usually only comes to me uh when his barber is super booked or if he has something that he has to do like immediately he'll hit me up and he'll come through um and i just want to make sure that i give him the best service and the best haircut that i possibly can and he's super lenient you know he doesn't really care uh, a whole lot as long as it looks clean and it looks good for him so that's that's what i can promise him at the end of the day that it's going to look good so if i take a little bit more extra time on this cut he's usually pretty cool with that i just want to give him the best haircut that i can um without knowing just because i don't have enough practice i don't have enough clients uh you know to practice that and so i'm not super familiar but i am growing with it i think i'm getting a lot better with uh, my coarse curly haircut so um only time will tell you know if i hopefully i get a couple more clients that i can practice on and then just keep improving that skill i just want to be as well rounded as possible i want to be able to cut every single hair texture um that walks in and and books with me so any step that i can learn that's what i want to do and this flared out type of hairstyle with the curls on top uh seems a little bit easier to me just because it's more like uh like a hispanic haircut um if you've seen my other tutorials you know that i usually go off of the parietal ridge um, and I flare out making it kind of square. So that's kind of what I did with this hairstyle if they got like a brush cut type of thing or like a, a Super low like a two on top with the grain and then got a fade underneath Sometimes I get a little bit lost because I'm thinking that I need to go square with it when I really need to go more round with that So um, sometimes a little, there's a little bit more bulk that I leave um, Not knowing really but I think next time that I do a brush cut a super short cut on this uh, texture of hair i think i'll have it on lock because i need to get out of the mindset that that haircut needs to be square when really it needs to be more rounded and and shape uh the the 
the contour of, of the of the client's head so um i think i'll be ready next time i'll be able to blend it in more um because if you've seen actually i'm going to drop it in the corner right here i'm going to show you the first time i ever did his hair um because he had it really short and i just left some bulky areas that i didn't really know how to blend because i was thinking that i needed it to be squared off when really it needed to be rounded so i'll drop that right here you guys can check it out and then you'll see um as this haircut goes on how much i progressed on his fades and you can see the technique that I'm using right here. I'm going with the grain. That just helps the hair lay down better, um, but it also helps blend in that top bulk into the fade. And now I, I knew about going with the grain on this uh, texture of hair before, even with the first time I've cut his hair, um, but I wasn't super, super good at it. Like even then you could still see that around the parietal ridge i needed to blend that even more um I, like i said i was keeping it more square when it should have been more rounded and softly blended um but i've learned that uh you know with going with the grain and blending in really that bulk of above the parietal ridge into the fade um i've just gotten better at that and so you want to do that with curly hair um sometimes if you're going against the grain it's not gonna blend it as easily or as uh you know as softly um so you want to go with the grain and it'll actually lay down that hair for you um better than like going against the grain and then you have to keep brushing it um so going with the grain it'll blend but it'll also uh not take off as much hair and bulk it'll just kind of softly blend it and lay the hair down so then when you go up against the grain it's just gonna blend seamlessly from going uh up against the grain and then going down with the grain and when you're going with the grain um you kind of want to use either a higher guard or like half a measurement higher so like for example if i go with the grain with the number one closed i'll go against the grain with the number one open because when you go with the grain it's going to leave the hair longer than if you would if you went against the grain so you always want to use a higher um measurement if you're going against the grain versus if you're going with the grain and you guys can see that blend starting to come together right now i'm using my half guard um just detailing making sure i get all the dark spots out um you want to go back and detail every time that's what's going to set you apart that's what's going to uh, bring this haircut even uh, better um because if you don't go back in detail there's certain spots that will be uh unfinished and um you know you can get away with that if you're one of those barbers that's super fast you need you want to get them in and out um the haircut would be fine right but if you want to bring it to that next level and really elevate your haircut you need to do some detail work it's that's what's going to set you apart from other barbers you know maybe they'll stop before the detail work and they'll be like okay i'm fine with that i'm happy with this but if you go back in detail it's gonna just blow them out of the water and it's gonna show uh that extra level of care um to your clients they're gonna be like oh he really is taking his time he really wants uh this haircut to be perfect and i say perfect uh like that you know not your haircut's never gonna be perfect it's impossible you can't be perfect but you can get as perfect um as close to perfect as you can and that's showing the clients that you really care about their hair and you really care about them um walking out of here with the best service that they can and that's what's really gonna have them coming back to you is uh that level of care and that level that shows that you um really understand and really want them to have the best service and so guys another tip right here as you see me doing i'm free handing into the top of the hair um with curly hair if you pick it out it, it's easy instead of using like clipper over comb um because the comb can get stuck and it maybe it'll pull out more hair than than you want um you can just freehand straight into the top and it's gonna give you the most accurate shaping with this texture of hair uh with straight hair you know you want to use clipper over comb it's gonna pull the hair out so you can you know get as accurate as possible with the shaping but with with tight curly hair like this you can just go in with either your clipper um all the way closed or your clipper open um and really sculpt and define that shape that you're looking for because really what the hair is going to do is it's going to stay pretty much in that spot where you picked it out so going freehand straight from uh i'd say like your number one and a half open or your number two if you use that uh up there near the parietal ridge you can just freehand straight from there 
um, up into that shape. And so right here, I, I went I, after I did my my freehand shaping. I went back in um, with my number two guard, and I'm just trying to blend in a little bit more um, into that freehand, into that shape, just to make it look a bit more uh, seamless, a, a bit more like it's all one length, and it's you know getting a nice blend up into the curls. And even after this cut, you know, I'm always looking back at my haircuts and looking at and crit critiquing what I could have done better. Um, I know that I could have done better around like his hairline, just making it blend a bit more. I think I left a little bit too much bulk around that area. Um, sometimes I leave bulk around there to make the, the lineup look darker because I don't use enhancements. I never use enhancements yet. Um, I want to learn how to use enhancements, but on this cut, I didn't use any enhancements. So sometimes I'll leave around the hairline, especially a little bit darker. So it gives that illusion that um, the hairline is, is darker than the rest of the haircut. But I think I should have blended it out a bit more and brought the hair down a bit more because um, once you see that I go to line it up, there is some bulk around the area. It just looks uh, almost not unfinished, but it just looks like um, it should have been shorter. Um, but like I said, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I'll, I'll definitely perfect that as I go on. I just think that I need to bring my guidelines up near the hairline a bit more. Um, and, and bring it down shorter so then when I do line it up it's you know even more sharp and so now I'm just combing everything back down near that Prado Ridge and I'm gonna be freehand shaping it again just to get the final shape the other one was kind of like a rough draft um, I was testing out the shape trying to get everything looking good and now that I'm happy with my blend I'm going to pull down the hair again and then I'm going to freehand shape into the top once more, really, really finalizing that desired shape uh, of my haircut. And you can really kind of take your time on this. You don't really want to go too fast um, in case, you know, you mess up that shape. So really taking your time with this is going to speed it up because you know that you're going to get a more uh, accurate shape that you're looking for instead of going in fast and then you screw up and then you have to chase that line and then you have to change the shape of the haircut so take your time with this um it kind of <laughs> reverses in your brain if you take your time you're going to be going faster because then you have to worry about cutting less if that makes sense and before you saw me doing freehand i was using like a half guard with the clothes now i'm using my two going up a bit higher um really ensuring that this this is uh getting a good transition from the fade into the bulk and i probably didn't have to do this step um which is what took me a little bit longer in the haircut i probably didn't have to do this step but i just wanted to make sure that the detail was uh you know extra extra perfect i, I wanted to make sure that it looked good for him um especially he was going out for his wife's birthday i wanted to make him look good so i was doing everything um that i could to to make this transition super super clean like i said it was probably good before this i really didn't have to do this step but you know that extra level of detail just pushed it over for me it, it made me it gave me confidence that this haircut was going to be um better for him and guys believe me sometimes there is too like you can detail too too much um so be liberal with your detail work you know get in there get the dark spots get all the stuff that you need to and then stop it it's good you know if you detail too much you're gonna be changing the fade and you don't want that to happen so get your detail work in make sure it looks good and then move on And he didn't want nothing too crazy with his beard. He just wanted it all trimmed down. So I'm using my number one and I'm getting everything um, down to that number one length. Um, you guys have to be careful around his neck area under um, his chin. Uh, with curly hair, you know, it gets super sensitive down there. Everything's curling in every some, you know, every direction. So you want to be careful when you're lining that up and when you're shaving that area with your trimmers um, and even with your shaver. So you want to be super delicate with that step. And I like to use a uh, shaving gel when I do the edge ups um, on his cheek line. 
uh, is better, like gives me peace of mind, is, is a little bit safer. Um, so you know that you're not gonna be snagging his curly hair with the razor. The, the razor will glide smoothly across the skin. Um, it just makes it easier. You know, you can dry shave, um, but it just, I think it's better for this, uh, especially for his skin, his sensitive skin, um, to use a shaving gel just so the, the razor glides easier across this face. You're not going to be worrying about his curly hair getting snagged in there. And then you're leaving razor bumps above his cheek line. Um, and for his beard, uh, I didn't want to do anything crazy. Um, you like, sometimes I'll fade in his beard, but I wanted to see what it would look like with a pointed uh, end and just going giving a super sharp line on his cheeks and and around his edge up on his beard um, And I think it turned out pretty good You guys let me know in the comments if you think that uh, a faded look would be better on him or the the um, Pointed off look I'm gonna drop in the last haircut. I gave him because I gave him a faded beard um, Let me know in the comments. What you guys think and keep in mind with that other beard I left it, you know, I didn't take any length off of that beard. So his beard isn't super super dense So it does look a bit different, but then again, it, it still was faded so faded versus pointed Let me know what you guys think. Um, I think he looks better with a short shorter uh, beard anyway um, but either way, I think with the faded or the pointed look, I think he can really pull it off if uh, all the length on his beard is, is one length and pretty short because um, it looks denser that way, in my opinion. And in the, the last cut that I gave him, I didn't style his hair at all. He came in that way with his uh, curls already twisted. But in this haircut, I'm actually going to use um, a curling sponge and I'm going to twist his hair just so you guys can see how to do that. If you don't know how to twist hair on top with a curling sponge or uh, some sort of curler, um, I'm going to show you guys that and how to achieve that. I just think that it brings this look, especially with the flared out kind of high fade. Um, them twists really bring that style together. But for now, I'm just going to be quiet for a bit. I'm going to let you guys uh, watch me finish his beard off. Um, and then I'll catch you guys when I'm going in for that style.
going to jump back in here. Um, if you guys can see where his hairline is, you see that it's a little bit darker. I think I should have brought my guideline up a little bit more um, just so it looks more blended in that area. But you live and you learn. You know, I can't change it now. I can just learn from it. Um, and I'm always going to improve and critique my work. That's the best thing about, you know, making these videos and really documenting your progress. Um, I, I can't stress this enough. Document every single one of your haircuts, especially if you're first beginning out. Um, so you can see what you can work on. Um, you know, if you have it in video, you can clearly see, oh, maybe I could have done this different, or maybe I should have blended out that line a little bit more. Um, just, you, you know, you're your biggest uh, obstacle. Nobody's going to be able to do it for you. So if you can learn from your own mistakes, that's just going to bring your skill. Um, it's just going to keep you improving. And so you're, you're your biggest teacher. And so now I'm prepping the hairline to be able to get lined up. So I'm going with the grain with the number one open, just knocking down those kind of bangs and getting it ready. You don't want to have all kinds of curly overhang because um, it's not going to give you the cleanest edge up. So you want to knock those hair down and make sure that it's laying down and then you're ready to line up. And you guys can see that his hairline is naturally super crooked. It's way higher on his left side than his right side. So I start off with the higher side and making sure that I keep it as low as possible and as natural as possible. But I will have to um, professionally push back his right side just to make sure that it's uh, more even. Um, I'm, I don't want to leave him with a super crooked hairline. So I will need to push back his right side of his hairline. It's just something that I have to do. So I'm not going to go super, super deep um, on on pushing it back, but just enough to where it looks more, more straight than it actually is. And with the front edge up and all the other like edge ups around his um, like C cup and his vertical bars, you want to kind of make sure you go over it a, a good number of times really brushing out that hair um just so you know that you know after the the third time or the second time you know that all the hair is laid down in place and you know that you're cutting it um super sharp and there's not going to be any uh overlying hair that you missed so make sure you're brushing make sure you're combing out down that hair so you can snip off every hair that's lying over that that edge up um and then that's what's going to give you the cleanest edge up it's going to be super sharp it's going to be dark um and it's going to be nice there's not going to be any hairs flying away or, or hanging over that hairline and when doing your hairlines i think the easiest way is to start off on one side from the middle so you start off in the middle and then go to the left side for example um, get that all edged up and then you go back to the middle and then move out and walk that line to the right side It's what's really gonna keep you um, in line if you try to do from left all the way to the right um, It's not gonna be as straight uh, Because you're, you're just taking too much space. So really start off from the middle your middle point um, where you want it to to be and then work your way from one side and then go back to the middle and work your way to the other side. That's what's really going to keep that line super straight. And to check your work to make sure that it is straight, you're going to want to stand in front of your client, them looking straight at you, just so you can get an accurate depiction of, you know, if maybe I need to go higher on this side or, or something like that. So you can really see the whole hairline. If you're, you know, doing the left side and then you do the right side, you're kind of looking at it at one angle. Um, you're not going to really see the left side versus the right. So you want to uh, periodically step back, make sure that your client's looking straight on at you so you can see um, what you need to straighten out. And when you're doing edge ups, especially do not dig in with your trimmers. Let the trimmers do the work. They should be sharp enough to get you a sharp line without really having to put any pressure in at all. You don't want to be cutting your clients, um, especially if you gap your trimmers. I, I gap all my tools. Um, so they're, you know, precisely set. I don't want to be pushing in super hard and having, uh, the trimmer cut my client's skin and setting in on the lower side. I take my time and I move up as I need. I don't want to push it back so far that I have to go and push back his weaker side. So I, I start off lower than I, um, initially think I should be. And then if I need to go higher to make it, to make the line more straight, I'll do that, but I don't want to start off going super high and then 
you know his stronger side is then higher than his weaker side and then i have to push up the weaker side so make sure you're taking your time with this making sure you're really looking at the whole hairline and really taking it up step by step if you need to to make sure you give uh, a straighter line And now finally it's time to bring it that that desired style that we want so i sprayed a little bit of water on his hair and now i'm putting a curling cream in it to get ready for my curling sponge and the curling sponge i'm using isn't really a sponge i'm using the kiss uh bow wow curler i'm not really sure it's like a nylon or like plastic kind of a thing it's just more sanitary than a sponge a sponge you know you can't really clean like that this one uh, you can run it under water. It's 100% waterproof, um, so you can easily clean this one. I, I think this curler is a lot better than a regular curling sponge. Just for that, you 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 know you can be sure that you're you have it sanitized and clean for every client. Unlike the sponges, you can't really clean those. You can't really wash those. So this is, in my opinion, the best curler out there. Um, just because you can run it underwater, you can get it clean and sanitized. And when I'm doing this Passover with the curling sponge i'm going in little circles always going in the same direction because if you change the direction that you're using that you're moving the little circles it's just going to delete the the curls that you put in place so you want to make sure that all around the head you're going in that same motion and now that finished style is complete the haircut is complete so i'm going to go ahead and dust them off clean them up i spray him with the alcohol make sure that his skin is super clean he's not going to get any razor bumps all the, the shave areas are clean and sanitized um, and get them ready to go. And I try to use uh, the alcohol on every client just for peace of mind. You know that you're letting them leave extra, extra clean. But this is the final cut. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you could smash that subscribe button, really help support the channel. And I really appreciate every one of my uh, supporters, every one of my subscribers. Um, and I hope you guys learned something from this video. And I really thank you guys for watching and, and sticking with me. So it's your boy Pico Blurred. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.